Last year, I went out with my own money and purchased one of the most expensive robot vacuum slash mops on the market. And although this is normally a photography channel, I was so impressed with this product, I decided to make a review video and it ended up being one of the most popular videos that I released last year. I'm gonna give you my thoughts on what it's been like owning this product for the last year and Roborock just sent me the new S8, which is the updated version, which comes out today. Let's check it out. In case you're unfamiliar with these robot vacuums, let me give you a quick rundown of what makes the S7 just so special. We've all seen robotic vacuums before, but unlike the dumb ones that just ram into walls and turn around and go another direction, or the slightly newer ones that use a camera to help them navigate around, the S7 uses a camera, a LiDAR, and a light to not only navigate around your house, but also map your house in incredible detail. This map helps your robot clean in the most efficient way possible. It's not just randomly driving around, hopefully running over dirt particles. It is cleaning your house in straight lines, just like you might mow your grass. And because it has this laser navigation system, it can work in complete darkness. Now the robot also uses a camera to figure out its location, but also what's in front of it. There's certain items on the floor, for instance, a cable or a shoe. The robot can actually recognize it and ignore it completely. And maybe more importantly than that to me is that the robot will stay away from walls and drapes and instead of dragging itself along your baseboards, making marks all the way down, it leaves one or two millimeters between itself and the wall so you never have to worry about repainting. Now, this isn't just a vacuum, it's also a mop and it holds its own water, it will spray it on hard floors and it will vibrate the mop as it goes. It can recognize carpet and hard floors with some ultrasonic sensor and it will lift up the mop when it's on carpet so it doesn't get your carpets wet and it will drop that mop back down and start mopping again when it reaches hard floors. All of that probably sounds impressive, but maybe the most impressive thing is the optional dock that you can get as well. This dock not only charges the robot, it will also empty the dustbin. If you've ever mopped a floor before, you know that your mop gets dirty. Well, every 15 or 20 minutes, the robot will go back to the dock. It will clean the mop. It will empty the dirty water into a separate dirty water tank, and it will refill the soapy water back into the robot so that it can continue mopping. The Roborock app is incredible and it keeps track of every single thing the robot does. I actually have a cleaning history here. You can see that it's run 275 times and it has been running 360 hours. In the last year, I think I've replaced the mopping pad on the back. I've replaced the, the bags inside. I think I've gotten two of those bags. I think I put a new filter in it and that might be it. So for the most part, this robot has been working for the entire year and it really hasn't cost me any extra. The one thing you have to remember is that approximately every three or four days, you have to empty out the dirty water tank and refill the clean water tank. Now, I don't know if there's a way to automate this. I don't know if there's a way to, to run pipes into a sink or into a toilet or something, but I hope one day Roborock can figure that out because this could literally become the type of product that you only have to check on every four, five, six months, and that would be unbelievable. But right now, probably the one thing I could complain about with this system is that I still have to refill the tanks every three or four days. So as you can imagine, I am still absolutely blown away by this product. It was incredibly expensive when I purchased it. I think I spent over $1,500 for this thing. And I was worried that it might last for a few months and then break, but I can confidently tell you, at least for me over the last year, this has been one of the most reliable and impressive products I have ever purchased. So when Roborock decided to send me the new S8, I was obviously incredibly excited. Now the whole S7 and S8 system looks very, very similar, but there is one very big difference. You'll notice that the S7 charging dock has three very obvious containers on top, whereas the S8 has this front plastic cover. I personally prefer the look of the older S7. My wife prefers the cleaner look of the new S8. I will say that the S8 requires that you 
replace the bins up over the top of that plastic cover. And so if you wanna hide this robot under a very low cabinet, that could cause you some problem. We do hide ours under a cabinet and we still have plenty of room with the S8, but I did wanna mention that. Now, the one way you're going to be interacting with this robot again and again and again is with the clean and the dirty water tanks. And I do have to say with the S7, I think there was a slight design flaw with the handle. When you pull each of these containers out, you can't actually open the top without putting the handle back down. And it makes emptying these containers a little bit more difficult. Roborock has fixed that with the S8 and I definitely prefer the new style of these containers. Now I've got a list here of some of the pros and cons of the S7 and the S8 and I really just don't care about any of these. Let me explain why. The S8 has 30% faster charging. What do I care? The thing cleans while I sleep every night. I don't care if it takes all night to charge. As long as I wake up to a clean house, I'm happy. The older S7 has a larger internal dustbin on the robot itself. I don't care about that because it cleans out the dustbin after every cleaning, so that doesn't matter to me at all. Now, the S8 is supposed to have a much better vacuum, much more suction power, and now two rollers that can pick up even more stuff. This may sound really important, but the truth is with the S7, I already feel like it picks up everything. I mean, it's cleaning every single night. My house isn't that dirty anyway. And you can have options within the app of how much suction do you wanna set, low, medium, or high. I've always had the vacuum just set to medium. So I've not even used the maximum vacuum setting on the S7. So the idea that the S8 can suck even harder doesn't really matter to me. All I want is to wake up every day to a clean house and the S7 can do that with the lower suction mode. The S8 is supposed to have reactive 3D for better navigation and I was excited to test that out in the real world and see if that actually made a difference in the way that it cleaned or navigated my house or stayed away from obstacles. So I set both robots to clean at the exact same time and I just watched them work. And for the most part, both of them did a really good job of staying away from certain items like shoes or cables. But if you have a really messy house and you have just strange items all over the floor, both of these robots will get confused. You can see here, I left all my kids' toys out and the robot will just start pushing them around, which isn't a big deal unless the toys are small, then it definitely will start sucking them up. If you have like a piece of paper on the ground, it's gonna get it all wet and then it's gonna suck up wet paper into the vacuum and it's just gonna be a big mess that you're gonna have to clean. So to live in harmony with any robot vacuum, you're going to have to be somewhat of a tidy person. So every single night, my wife and I clean up the house. We make sure that there's nothing on the floor and then we just know when we go to bed, the robot's going to do the rest for us. When I bought the S7 last year, I thought there was a high probability I was going to regret it. I mean, how can I possibly justify spending 1500 bucks on a robot vacuum? I mean, my arm works, I can vacuum and mop myself. Is it really worth that amount of money? But honestly, it's been so reliable that I have not regretted that decision once. If you already own an S7, I don't think there's any reason to upgrade to the S8 at all. But if you're looking to buy one of these products because you don't own one and you're trying to decide between the seven and the eight, if you want the absolute top of the line, best on the market, get the S8, it's unbelievable. But honestly, the S7 is still an amazing product and it's 95% the same as the S8. I've also seen the S7 highly discounted during holiday sales like 4th of July or Black Friday. It's probably going to be discounted even more heavily this year. So check out the links in the description. You can see the live price right now for each one of these. And you can decide if it's worth paying a little bit more for the S8 or you can save a ton of money and stick with last year's model, the S7. It's still one of my favorite products. What is that called? Robot. A robot.